so. Pastor Kim asked if we're excited about God. You know, if you, if you saw him, if you, could, if you could just see him the way he really is, you know, that's kind of like me and uh, what would it be, Maseratis. I've never sat in a Maserati. I've never driven a Maserati. They kind of look cool going down the road, but they look kind of awkward to drive maybe. You know, it's kind of hard to see out of and stuff. I'm sorry, but I'm just not really excited about a Maserati. But I've driven a uh, Jeep, and Jeeps are fun. I like Jeeps. <laughs> you got a really tight turning radius, you know, and you can. <laughs> if you've ever tasted of God's goodness, you, you might want some more, amen? And you might be excited when you're going to go back. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like Haley and Chewy's, you know. She she, I, she started salivating right now when she heard that word, because because that's what she likes. <laughs> Here's the cool thing about God. Um, if you've ever been changed by him, you kind of want to be changed some more, right? You just want to experience him some more. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit tonight because um, uh, some stuff we were reading out of out of Revelation uh, just talks about the glory of God and, and how it's all going to end up that way. You know, everybody's going to see him the way he, he really is, you know, and everything's going to be revealed for what it really is. But I don't want to wait. I don't want to I don't want to be confined to this stuff that we see here on this earth. Amen. And I don't want to stay the same. I don't. I'm thankful that even with with every additional gray hair that I get on my head. Did I. Yeah, right. I, I thought he, I was going to say something about Richard because I saw he had a little bit of gray, too. But I was I didn't want to pull you dry you out too much. But I know I'm getting them myself. And, and, you know, with everyone, it's not it's not something that you should say, well, life's all going. I'm losing my life. No, I get more. Every day becomes special. Hey, Amen. Isn't that good? So anyway, we're, we're going to actually be talking about some of this. And I might just be getting ready myself a little bit for what God's going to be uh, working at us. I believe that that the spirit of almighty God is 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 desiring to move here at worship life. Amen. And I think he is. I think he's, he's like a river, you know. He's going by right now. And we can either get in or we can just say, man, that river looks like it's going somewhere. Or we can say, no, I'm going to go with the river. Amen. And what's really neat about getting in the river, have you ever, um, have you ever tried to swim in a river? Um, you know, you get out in the river and what happens? All of a sudden, you're further down the stream because <laughs> you can't. You got to have you got to be pretty powerful to go upstream. Right. And it's probably just not going to happen. And uh, if you just hang out in the river, it'll take you way down the river. That's the way God wants to do. He wants to take us somewhere on him. Amen. I just got a little song I want to sing. Um, Pastor Kim Haley, whoever wants to sing along, you can do this. It just talks about being changed by the, the spirit of almighty uh, by the glory of God. And um, it, it's going to happen to everybody. You know, amen. They're going to be exposed to the light of God's glory. I want to talk about some of those changes that are going to take place. So, um. Whispers of comfort and love Rivers of joy then will flood all consuming desire for holy fire transforming all those who behold beholding the glory beholding the glory beholding the glory of the Lord. We are changed. We are changed. We are changed by the Spirit of the Lord. We are changed. We are changed. are changed by the spirit of the lord from glory to glory from glory to glory from glory to glory 
by the Spirit of the Lord. We are changed. We are changed. We are changed by the Spirit of the Lord. We are By the Spirit of the Lord, from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory, by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that? It's a promise that we have. It's an assurance we have. And it's, 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 it's in expectancy. I'll slow that down really slow so I can say it right. It's in expectancy that we should have. Amen? Every time we come together. We're going to be changed by the Spirit of the Lord. All right. You can go right next door to this next uh, unit down the way. How many want some pizza right now? I want pizza right now. Praise you, Jesus. How many have experienced the, the peace of God when you shouldn't have it? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. How many when, when you uh, were really, oh, that does come here. Oh, okay. We're going to have a, a members meeting afterwards here. So uh, uh, I guess that's, is that preparation for that? Okay. I didn't know about that. All right. Um, so, it's amazing how powerful our God and huge He is and awesome He is and mighty He is and how misunderstood He is, really. Amen? He is so, he's so incredible. And, and, you know, we like to keep him in a picture where he's kind of calmly and meekly and mildly uh, in the garden with a, a light shining down on him as if he's not going to harm a butterfly, you know. <laughs> and uh, that, is, that is the heart of God towards us, isn't it? Jesus is God towards us. But he wants, and he, part of what he is, is he's righteous, Amen. And, you know, there's, there's some stuff going on in America right now where it's antichrist. It's coming against the church. It's like, why don't you say stuff like that against any other religion? Well, there's something about Christians in there There's something about us. We're kind of different, aren't we? Uh, we make waves. Righteousness makes waves. You can't just go on being how you want to be when there's somebody right. You know, I was talking with somebody uh, yesterday. I was talking with this guy. And he didn't realize that, that I was a Christian, you know. And he starts telling me all this stuff, how he likes to go out and do this and he likes to do that. Start talking about, you know, women and everything. And it's like, he doesn't even know who I am, does he? <laughs> you know? <laughs> he was in a state of mind that it wouldn't have been good for me to confront him at that point because he <laughs> might have, you know, might have kind of tipped him the other way. But I felt like, you know what? This is not, this is not who I am, this is not right. And as soon as righteousness reveals itself, it's funny how people that are cussing a blue streak one moment forgot all their cuss words when they discover <laughs> that, that God's there, right? Or that somebody that just honors God is there, right? right. right? Yeah. It would be amazing if we understood what some of these uh, sports announcers or, or you know, uh, people on TV how they really talk, because all of a sudden, Shazam, they get, and the light turns on. Here's part of what I want to talk about tonight. The light turns on, and all of a sudden, who they want to present to the world is something that is kind of wonderful, you know? 
And, and this is, it's, that actually isn't necessarily a bad thing. I, I want to I say, say this, because uh, the crux of what I want to get here, to, here tonight is, is that where God's glory is, there's a light. It's a light that changes stuff. You know? There's seeds that don't do anything. They just sit there dormant, right? Until what do they get? They get a little bit of moisture, but they have to have some light too, don't they? Right? And that light comes on, you know, the, the, on the farm. They used to put a light on all the, on, on the eggs, you know. The eggs would just be warmed by that light and they, they, they would grow. But um, there's something about the, the glory of God that where it is, there's going to be some changes that take place. So let's look first at Revelation 19. Um, boy, we've had a good time in God's presence tonight, haven't we? I, I uh, what's that? Um, the glory's light changes. We could say that here tonight. So we're going to be talking in the next few weeks about preparing for the glory. Um, and some of the verses I want to just touch on here tonight, I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible because we do some, have some other things we need to get to later on. But God is uncompromising in his righteousness and in his holiness. He is. And for him to, to be otherwise, he couldn't be what he's going to be. He's going to be a judge too. He's, he is a judge. <laughs> right? And he's a wonderful savior to me right now. I love singing about him. I love getting close to him. I love feeling the warmth of his presence. I love being forgiven. Don't you love being forgiven? Wow. Way beyond my merit at all. I don't deserve it in the least. But Jesus loves me just the way I am. But he doesn't, he loves me so much the way I am that he's not going to leave me the way I am. He's going to make a change in me. Amen? So, um, so I, I was reading along, we're getting to the end of, of Revelation here, and, I, and uh, there's such a discrepancy about how the world sees God and how he really is. They just don't, they don't perceive him at all. They don't see him. Um, they think that, that man is changing the environment in such a way that it's going to bring the end of the world. And the only way that man is changing the environment is by his heart. <laughs> and it's going to change Things are going to shake. There's going to be earthquakes going on. There's going to be fire coming in. And it's not going to be because I was driving my Honda down the road and emitting some emissions, you know. We might be affecting things a little bit, but I'll tell you what, the heart of man is going to change. Not just little things, but the environment. Yeah. Everything's going to quake. Everything's going to shake. Yeah. Don't you like Revelation? It's like, this is when God's saying, hey, enough of this, Right? But how critical it is for us to not have a trace of the nature of the world in us. Because even in judgment, they still curse God. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now, they are going to bow. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Because yeah. Jesus is going to come. It's, it's amazing that there's even a battle at that point. Mm -hmm. You know? It's like, how, how could you even fight back against this amazing? So the same Jesus that came in, in, in the... In the in the manger, the same Jesus that took himself to the cross and humbly said, here I am. He's going to come back on a white horse in battle gear. Yeah. And he's going to say, for the sake of the ones that chose me, for the sake of the ones that were uh, persecuted because of my name, there's going to be judgment. Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> All right. So let's look here. I saw, Revelation 19, 11, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. It's funny because there's all these different names of this guy. They, they want to see, they want to say, oh, if you're a Christian, you'll just let everybody be the way they, they want to be because that's how Jesus is. That's the, that's the world's perception of Jesus. Oh, you just love everybody the way they are. You just say, okay, it's okay. Oh, you were born that way. I didn't know. I thought God created you this way. No, oh, you, oh so you had an idea about that. Well, okay, yes. And I heard that somebody married their dog. You know, it's like, oh, I guess you were born that way too. Huh? Well, <laughs> no, God says certain things and we bow down before what he says. Amen? Amen. 
and, and this stuff, it, it's like, it sounds like new stuff, but it isn't new. There's stuff that's happened. It's thousands of years ago, same kind of stuff going on. Why did the flood happen, <laughs> right? Same junk, same junk. People didn't understand that God is a holy God. Yeah. And it might seem like the sun's coming up like it did yesterday, and you just keep doing whatever you want to do today, and you can go out and party, and you can do whatever you want to do. But no, there's an end coming to it. Yeah. Right now, where it's TikTok right now, yeah. right? Yeah. Amen? And the same Jesus that everybody wants to say is just supposed to be nice and, and fluffy and love everybody, he's a righteous He's a representation of the heart of God. He is the heart of God. He's not just a... He is. Amen? And he's faithful and true. That's part of who he is. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire. We need to have somebody paint a picture of that, don't we? I'm sure there is somewhere, but you know. And on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. See, this is what I thought was kind of interesting. They all already said what his name was, faithful and true. But that's not enough because there's all sides of God. There's all sides of Jesus. Okay, you put a label on him. What you, he's my savior. He's my redeemer, right? He's all these things. But then there's a name that he's the only one that knows what that is. Isn't that interesting? He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the word of God. Well, he's got another name. He wears a lot of hats. That's what it said. He's got a lot of crowns. He's going to do a lot of different stuff. He's going to take himself humbly to the, to the cross, but then he's going to rise up on a white horse, and he's going to do, he's gotta, gonna do a lot. He's not just going to wear a crown of thorns. He's going to wear the crown of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Hallelujah. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen. White and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. This is Jesus, isn't it? This is our wonderful Savior that we can talk to every morning. But he's not just a little thing to be, that we're dealing with. Amen. He's a mighty God. He wages war. Out of his eyes come flames of fire. I like that one song we were talking about. I, I, I want to be consumed by the fire of God. I want to be changed by him. Amen? This is what he's doing. This is what's going to happen. Everybody's going to see him someday. Right? Let's go to Revelation 21, 22. It's very important to have, you know, sometimes when we talk, the men, we're, we just began this last week, and I miss, I need to try to catch up on that or whatever I can do to catch on. We started on Sunday nights with the fear of God. And, you know, sometimes, e even in church, we, say, we like to say, well, it's not really fear in God. It's, it's just reverencing. Well, what is reverence? It's being overwhelmed by this being that is so much bigger that you, than you are that could just squash you with his breath, you know. Really? Because unless, you're, unless the pattern of every step that you're taking in your life is being transformed by this God, you're not reverencing Him. Because you don't believe in Him more than you believe in your little occupation or whatever else you got going on in your life. Right? Because <laughs> if, if that's what determines your decisions for your life and not this God, you do not fear Him. Right? You don't fear Him. And so how do you get to that place? Well, God... You know, it's like, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to. When you see him, when that prayer gets answered, it should shake you, yeah. even if you know him well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What happened to the people in the, in, the te in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, that knew him well? What happened when they actually realized that they were seeing him? They fell down, didn't they? Right? And that's what's amazing about, to me, in Revelation. 
about the people that don't know him. If you say that you do not tremble in his presence, then you're reflecting more those who resisted him in Revelation because they even saw him and still didn't bow down, right? The closer you get to the glory of God, the more you will be affected by his presence. Amen? The more his light will transform you, the more you'll feel the heat. Amen? And it's good stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My little iPad scrolls when I don't mean to. When I touch it, it scrolls. Okay. So we're in uh, Revelation 21, 22. I did not see a temple in the city. This is where we're going, right? This is where Jesus has taken us to. But I, I, I want us to just be able to see that there's a side of God that we're preparing for even right now. This is where he's taking us to, but let's look at just a few things in this, in this paragraph. It says, I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Right? The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. <laughs> The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will, will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. Now, there's something real interesting I'll draw out from this. The gates are open all the time, right? The glory and the honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it. Well, I thought the gates were wide open. But you don't go through the gate, even though it's wide open, if there's impurity right? Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a responsibility, though, if my name has been written in that book, for me to understand what my name being written in that book means and who I'm being taken to in Him. Amen? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's that? Yeah, I'm going to be in that number. That's going to be me. But if I'm singing that, oh, there's so much involved in understanding what that means. Right? Because I, I, I can't have any other Lord. I can't be living for another reason. Don't you like that song we sang? I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Oh, that's just a wonderful thought. Well, it's going to change everything, isn't it? So, um, nothing impure will ever enter it, even though the gates are wide open. And why is that? There's a truth about um, purity, about where God wants it to. Why, do we, why does God want us to be pure? Because it's best for us, right? <laughs> why do you want your kid to be clean? Why do you want... <laughs> his water to not have junk in it because it's best for him. You know, my dog, he, he, he drinks this water out of the pool. I, I put a pool out there for him to get his feet wet in. He drinks his water. He, he, he gets mud in that water, and it's okay for him. He's a dog, you know. But my kid, I want him drinking pure water. You know, God wants the same thing for us. He wants us to be pure. He wants us to be holy. For this reason also, because that's where he abides. He wants us to be together, right? He wants, us for, he wants for us to flourish in the way he's made for us to flourish, not in some concept that the world puts on us that it's okay for us to, to just act this way or to do this way because we think God messed up on me, you know? No, it's, it's holiness, that he draws us to. Well, there's a truth about God's holiness and about him being a light because there's a correlation. He says, wherever he is, wherever you are in this city, there's no darkness. Where does a little kid go when he wants to do something that he knows he's not supposed to do? He'll sneak off and do it where he doesn't think you see him, doesn't he? That's where all sin takes place. You know, in, 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 the, uh, in the garden... In the garden, they didn't think God saw them, did they? They thought they were hiding out under the shade of the tree of life, right? 
And they're starting to think other thoughts. Do you think they would have been thinking that thought if they were talking to God? They would not. If, if the light was shining in their awareness, if the light was shining on them right now, there's no way they would have even touched that apple. Right? They thought they had a little darkness going on. Right? They thought they were able to taste of something that, that God was not going to be able to see. They didn't follow their thoughts very far, did they? they is, is God not going to know when we see him again? And, and yet, how much truth can we draw from this? How much are we allowing ourselves to have something other than love in our thoughts, in our reactions? Because that's the law, isn't it? That's the commandment that we have from God. And I'll tell you what, you would not say certain things about somebody even under your breath if you really knew that the light was on you, right? <laughs> what happens? <laughs> well, people have stage fright, don't they? What's that? That's when they step out on the stage and the spotlight's just on them, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm not used to being here. I don't even know what to do, right? Because why? Because you've been saying all kinds of other stuff, right? <laughs> that you thought you were in the dark. So why cannot anything impure come into the gates? Because the light is shining in there. In everywhere you go, in the whole place. It's a temple. Right? What are we? We're the temple of the Holy Spirit, aren't we? <laughs> But how many times do we put up a big old veil and say, Holy Spirit, you ain't coming in here. Is that true? You know, I know, I know the blood has, made a, it has ripped the veil, so we go right in the Holy of Holies. But what do we have to do with this? Who's he talking to? Who's Revelation talking to? It's not talking to the world, is it? It's talking to the church. Right? Why does he even say anything about impurity not coming into the, to, to the city? The city built four square. Don't you like that? Um, why is he talking about this? Because he's warning us, isn't he? He's saying, if you have ears to hear, you better hear this. Right? There's something a lot bigger than your little world going on around you. Right? And there's a reason to live for God right now. There's a le reason. I, I want to be shaken in this place. When we praise here, I want the glory of God to fill this place. Amen? I don't want to fool around. I don't care about who I think I used to be. You know, I, I, we all have inhibitions. We all think, well, that's not me. That's not what I do because I've never done it before. But God wants to, what's the change? Me doing something I haven't done before. Right. Amen? Right. <laughs> and it's not a whole lot different than people think they have a, a certain gender thing. that This is who I am. It's not who somebody else is because God made, made me this. God made you to flourish. And you to sit back and say, no, I can't do that because this isn't me. Let God be God. Let him be your creator. Let him tell you who you are. Yes. Right. Amen? Yeah. And that's what I want to yield to. I mean, even standing here right now, I want to yield to us. Spirit, speak through me. Yes. I never saw me doing this when I was a kid. I didn't set out to preach. You know? I just wanted to play my guitar. I just want to sing. You know? But God comes along. He says, I got something for you to say, too. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Let me find myself here again. All right. This is good, though, isn't it? Okay. Uh, nothing impure, impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So how are we preparing every single day for the glory of God. Amen? Because he's saying, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stories about Peter's going to be at the gates there and we got to get in, right? It's not just going to be our name. How, what, what, is it, what is it about a name? And, and I just want to touch on this because it's just been talking about different names of God, hasn't it? Well, it's not just going to be Stephen that's going to be written in the book of life. It's going to be what Stephen does. Amen? It's going to be, what is a name? It's a reputation, isn't it? 
built upon what you've done in your life. Amen? So when I'm saying my name is among that number, my name is, is in that book of life, that means every day what I'm establishing is my name, is who I am, is, is what I'm about. That's what establishes my name in that book. Is that good? Amen? It's not enough for me just to get out my, my ballpoint pen and, or, or say, uh, Peter, I'd just like for you to just put my name down there so I can go live the way I want to live. No, because it doesn't matter. Did you know that there's other people with my name? Have you had... <laughs> There's some people that, that have, they're, they're called Steve, and I just, can I, can I, can I not think of anybody in particular and just say this word, they're a doofus, you know, <laughs> when you think about, they have another name and it's doofus, right, no, can you understand what I'm saying here, it's because everything about that sound, even the word Jesus, there's a lot of people named Jesus in the world today, right, so just the name itself doesn't mean anything. It's what you're doing with your life around that name that defines who it is. Amen? Because <laughs> I've, you know, I've, I've had the understanding, all i got to do is, is get my foot in the door and I then, then praise God for grace. And, but this is talking about no, no impurity at all, is it? This is at the end of the book. This, is, this isn't the Old Testament. This isn't the Old Covenant. This is the end. This is the city built four square. Nobody goes through the open gates, the gates that are open to anybody who prepares for them. Is that right? Is that good? All right. <laughs> oh, forgive me. I keep touching this thing. All right. Praise God. Let's go to Revelation 22. This is made for us. This is what Jesus is doing. He said, what did he, what did he do when he took off through the clouds? He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I come again, I'm going to take you there. Right? There's just no way you really understand. If I were to say right now, you have the ticket in your hand to the, I don't, I, I don't even do this stuff, but like the, the, uh, um, no, 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 the, uh, the lottery. Yeah, you have the lottery ticket number in your hand. You, you just, I think I'll go to sleep on that one like I do when you say that I have uh, this in heaven. You know what I'm saying? But if you really understand you won and you really believe it, it's going to kind of change. You start making plans right now, don't you? It's like, well, <laughs> what am I going to do? Right? What am I going to do with it? Do we really understand? Then when he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. This is much better than Publisher's Clearing House. You know, it's better, much better than the, 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 the only winner in the lottery and whatever that is, and they take most of it anyway, and you end up losing it all because you, you weren't really prepared for it, right? Is that right? <laughs> I want to pre be prepared for the gates. Yeah. Amen? And I'm, if, if you're like me, I'm still wrapped up in some humanity here. Yeah. I need some help with this. Yeah. And here's where I want to draw the connection because even though there's a city built for square that is the light and, and the temple of God and everywhere you go in there, it's light. And you, there is no wrongdoing because everything is exposed. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, how do I prepare for that? Here's the cool thing is his glory comes down and glory floods my soul now. Amen? That's what happens, has to happen. I cannot do this on my own. I cannot say I'm going to quit doing that on my own. No, I need the glory of God to come in, shine his light in me. What am I doing? I'm getting a taste of heaven. I'm getting a preview, right? I'm getting a, I'm getting a portion of, of, of that space that he's preparing for me there. I'm getting to... Be prepared for it now. Amen. This is really good. Amen. 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 Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. And we talked about this earlier. As clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Are you with me? Revelation 22. Down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, 
yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. There will be... <laughs> I just... <laughs> how, to, how, to, how, how are pictures made? They expose to the light, right? And then it, it imprints on something else, right? How is the, how's the image of our Lord on our foreheads? got to be looking at him don't you amen (laughs) and when you look at him you're going to see some light it's going to come in it's going to change the way you see stuff completely amen not to the point of just some mental ascension no this goes to the core of your being to where i'm changing now because i got the image of my lord on my forehead there will be no more night they will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. Amen? Amen. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's easy to get motivated by the reigning forever and ever. Which we really don't have a comprehension of what that really is anyway. But that's not the motivation at all. That's, the, that's what's going to happen as a result. Your motivation in all of this is a savior that loved us amen not even all the glory it's like because i don't really understand all the glory anyway it's like how can i be motivated that completely well you start it's like we were saying if you start to taste of it a little bit have you tasted of it a little bit if you had it overwhelm your soul a little bit right and that's good but it's just a taste it's not it's not the whole thing right thank goodness because he's got a whole bunch of tastes he's not just 31 flavors either it's it's like Every day. Why does it say from glory to glory? Because there's no end to it. Amen? He takes us more and more into that place in Him. So, uh, praise the Lord. Praise you, Father God. Okay. Um, The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent His angels to show His servants the things that must soon happen take place Uh, look i am coming soon blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll it's amazing how powerful the word of god is associated with the glory of god this is not just a mental inputting of information of of uh what is it, garbage in, garbage out kind of a thing, you know? This is a spiritual impartation that comes by the Word of God. Right. Amen? Right. That this is transformation. What did Jesus say? He said, my words are what? Spirit, and they are life. They are life. This is, the, this is transformation to us. But he says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of the scroll. If anyone adds anything to them. This is critical. He said, this is exactly the way it's going to be. Don't try to figure it out and and make it work into your understanding somehow. This is the way it's going to be. Amen? Ask the Spirit of God for the revelation of what it is. Because it's got to filter through all this... We've all had a different experience of life. And even what I'm saying right now is all going through our little filter and we're saying, how does that relate to what I understand and all this kind of stuff. And the Word of God, and that's that's why the Word of God comes in and it divides between spirit and between uh, flesh, right? And it says, okay, this is the way it really is. This is what we're depending on right now as we're speaking. Amen? It is the Spirit of God to come in and reveal it to our hearts in a way that's going to make it... We're just getting started here. But I want to prepare Amen? And I'm so thankful that right now, God, I, 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 love, I, I love hearing about what God's doing in somebody's life. Because He cares about us, doesn't He? He, he cares about the things that, that, that trouble us. And He says, just cast your care on me. Let, me. let me take care of it. Right? Amen? 
But the biggest thing he's concerned about is not just the stuff that happens in our life, but what it's doing to our preparation for his glory, for our eternal place in him. Because what happens in our life, and this is why he touches us in our life, is because we can become so overwhelmed by something that we experience in our life, a sickness, a setback of some kind, that we begin to compromise our preparation for his glory by accepting something else as bigger than God. Right. Well, I guess the world is just bigger than God. No. No. So how do you confront that? You say, well, I'm not going to be anxious about anything then. I'm just going to take it to God in prayer. I'm going to trust Him. Even if I don't see the answer right away. What's happening then? I'm exalting God above anything else. Right. I'm shedding the light. What am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm taking what God has said about something and I'm letting it be a light on the situation because the enemy comes in and he's, he's trying to sneak in and tell us a lie. Because yeah. any of that other stuff is a lie anyway. He's trying to tell us a lie and he's only going to be able to do it in the dark if the word of God is not shining on it. Right. Amen? But if you take the word of God to any situation in your life that you're getting anxious about and you apply the word to it, what's it doing? It's that same glory that we're going to someday. Yeah, right. Being shown on the situation in our life and removing the power of the enemy to cause us to sin with regard to it. I just blew into this, if you're wondering what that is. I whistled through my teeth and it came back on. To cause us to actually sin with regard, because we're doubting the word of God, right? And we're choosing to let another Lord be influencing us at that time. Is that right? But if I'm going to prepare for the glory, how am I going to do that? Just try to get in, just put some... Worship music on and just start trying to float a little bit. Let's see, I saw somebody float, so maybe I need to just... No, it's taken the very core of what might trouble us in, in applying the light of God's word to it. Amen? Even that time in sin, where there might, each of us has a different button where sin can touch us easier, right? Men have a certain button that, that the enemy can touch us in. Women have a different button. They like to go shopping. You know, and they just need to quit to go. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But you know, anytime you're starting to be driven by those kinds of things, right? <laughs> just, just pray. We just have to go to God. When we get anxious about that, oh, I don't know where she's at. Here's, here, here's the truth. Here, here's, here's one. Uh, uh, in irrefutable truth is every time that car is out of the garage, money's being spent. <laughs> right? Look at how much they saved. Yeah, yeah. But didn't need to be spent, but somehow well, you saved some money along the way. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> you just leave that alone. Yo, we want peace in our home, don't we? That's right. Well, see, and the whole purpose of me shedding this on you is the one with the problem here is not the woman, it's the man because he's being anxious, right? <laughs> Got out of that one, right? <laughs> oh, boy, that, that was God leading that word there, right? All right. I'm going to save you from that peril that you almost got into. <laughs> All right. Well, praise God. We need to wrap it up here, but um, let's look at 2 Corinthians 3.18. <laughs> so this this is the uh, basis for the song that I I sang here at the beginning, and Second uh, Corinthians three eighteen. There's so much involved in the blood of Jesus. There's so much involved in what He's done for us, and and it's and it's amazing how just from the mere understanding that He's taken our sins. That, that thing that draws us in initially, it's, one, it's a wonderful revelation, isn't it? Light comes and it shines in on us and allows us to be transformed for the old man to die and for the new to become alive in that moment. Isn't that amazing? But man, there's so much more than just me saying, okay, I'm going to turn my back on. Are you, turning your, are, are you out of your own ability turning your back on sin? No, you're just accepting light to come in and shine on it to where it'll, it cannot remain anymore right? How do people fall back into sin? They turn the light off, right? They don't fellowship with God. They don't open up his word. 
What happens here in Revelation over and over again? It says, worship God in the midst of all this revelation of what he's going to do. In there. It says, worship God. Oh, that is so cool. What are you doing? You're taking who God is, his, his, his word and everything about him, and you're allowing it to shake you and quake you. That's what worship is. It's where it changes your whole life. That's what we're about, isn't it? Well, it'll, it'll make me a lover. It'll make me a, a deliverer, right? It'll make me excellent in everything that I do. Okay. So this is the key. I want to be ready for heaven. I don't want there to be any problem. Can I get in, please? <laughs> right? I see the gates open. If I run real fast, will you just let me go on? No, no. I, I got to be ready. Amen? And that's what, that's what this is about. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Isn't this wonderful? Open face. That means I'm not turning sideways. I'm not, I'm not shielding anything at all. Man, I was taking, I was taking Hayden to work this morning. I come out of on 1431. That sun was right in my eyes, and you had to put your hand up, you know, just to keep from driving into somebody, you know. But when it comes to God, I, there's nothing. I'm just gonna behold you, face to face. There's so many. It's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna cause us to maybe be a little bit uncomfortable from where we've at been at though, right? You just can't be like you were in the world. The world's going to, you're just going to say, oh, right? But the more and the more you, your eyes adjust and the more he begins to say, ah, it's not going to be about what you're used to seeing anymore. It's not going to be about what you can, I, I don't want to see it all. That, that's a lot of people, you know, they come into church and I, I, you're trying to get me to do that. You're trying to make me worship God that way. You're trying to get me to do this. You're trying I'm just trying to get you to take something out of the way so you can see the face of God. Yeah, that's it. Amen? Yeah. You start jumping a little bit, you'll start seeing a little bit more. Right. You start letting some of your flesh go yeah. because no flesh glory is in the presence of God. Yeah. You start getting rid of some of the flesh, your eyes are going to start to behold a little bit more. Yeah. Instead of something, it's going to be face to face. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And that's when the change comes. People need delivered, you know, and you can, you can come directly at them, you can yell at the devil, you can do everything else, and for them, what they need most of is a light of the glory of God to come in, amen? Now, it might take some, might need to deal with the, the, the enemy a little bit, but how are you going to deal with him, and how did Jesus do it? He'd say one word, wouldn't he? He wouldn't, he wouldn't argue with him, he wouldn't pick up a conversation. He just said, get out of there. Right? Why? Because every word that he spoke was exposed to the glory of God. He didn't say anything that wasn't exposed to the glory of God. So that means whenever he spoke, it was the glory of God. Amen? He was changed. We're changed. He came as a man. How did he act like the... He said, you only see, when you see me, you see the Father, didn't he? Why? Because that's, he'd, he'd go out all night long and he'd just look at the Father. And what happened? The light was coming in and it was changing. It was like a picture being taken. He was starting to look like his Father. He said, everything I do is my Father. He didn't say that just so we would say, wow, Jesus, you're really cool. You're just... No, he said, this is what you can do too. He said, I do that, now you do that. You look at me, you'll see the Father. You look at me, you'll look like the Father. Right? You can be like him. Changed from glory to glory, not by your own anxiety and your own efforts and the weakness of your own flesh, but by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So I believe God's preparing us as a body. I just, I, you know, it will happen. This is the way God works. We, dep we just trust in his word. He's going to perform things in us that are beyond us. Amen? And it's going to be according to his word. We don't have to be anxious about anything. <laughs> where, there is, where there is anything other than peace. We have an opportunity 
to apply the Prince of Peace to it. Amen? And to release ourselves from anything that would cause us to be anxious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord God. We shine the light of your word in our lives, Father God. Oh, we hunger and thirst after your righteousness, Lord God. Oh, we're, we're satisfied in you. We, we taste of you and it tastes so good, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, we rejoice in the favor that you put on us, Lord God. You're looking down upon us right now and you're loving us. You're excited about what, what, what your, your light is bringing into our life, Father God. The possibilities that are before us and, and you're, you're fired up about it, God. You're, you're excited about us coming to be with you. You're, you're excited about that place you've prepared for us, Lord God, in your glory. And you're excited about being able to, to take that place and make it part of where we're at right now so that we can be victorious in this life, that we can bring you glory, that when, when the world sees us, they see you, Lord God. And Lord, it's so good right now to, to, to allow our, our, our image and our understanding of you to be transformed, that you're an amazing God. You, you are uh, the defeater of all of your enemies. That there's no competition. That everything that the world is raising up to be some big deal right now, it'll be squashed. It'll be made to be nothing before our Savior riding on a white horse. What an image. What a thing to behold, Lord God. This is our Redeemer. This is our King of Kings. This is our Lord of Lords. This is the one that we lift up our voice to sing to, to honor but not to just sing and, and, and lift praises to, but to live for, Father God. Hallelujah. That our name is written. Our name is written by how we live, Lord God. Our name is written by, by the steps being ordered by you, Father God, by your light shining on our path. Thank you, Father God, that we can look forward and we can anticipate. You said that that, that, that light gets brighter and brighter towards perfection even, Lord God, that's quite apart from us alone, but is more than possible in you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for deliverance. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for liberty from strongholds, God. Things that used to just, we couldn't get rid of, Father. Hallelujah. That your spirit comes and it, it makes a way where there isn't other, any other way. Lord, I thank you for provision in our life. Lord, we're the enemy. <laughs> he was a devourer. He came to steal and to kill and destroy. He came to make somebody that was lacking out of us. But Lord, we've submitted our life to you. We have a heritage in you, and you provide for all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And so the enemy cannot tell us that lie. He cannot bring darkness over our eyes through that lie. But we have a light that we shine on that and say, God is my supply. He causes all grace to... To, to be strong in me. Now I'm able to give to every good work. It's, I'm a conduit of God's glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, your, I pray your light to shine into each one of our hearts here tonight, Father God, that, that in the place that we've come to and through the filters of our life that we have right now, that you're making a way, that your word is coming in and it's, it's causing transformation in us right now. And God, we gladly receive. We long for more, Lord God. We pray for more. God, I pray in these coming weeks that we have right now, but in the future of this church, uh, before you come to receive us uh, to yourself, Lord God, I've, I'm looking forward to things taking place in a huge way. For growth in this body, Father God, not just by campaigns and, and uh, ads and whatnot, Father God, but by the glory of God. You doing things here in our midst, Father God. You setting people free. You bringing healing and, and salvation yes. to many, Father God. Oh, we long for, for more and more, Father, that don't even know you to come and, and be transformed by a representation of you that is right. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Let's just lift our hands and worship him. Hallelujah.